the Suzuki Katana. First forged in the early 80s, it was a design exercise gone right for the Japanese brand. Categorized as a sport tourer, the Katana was truly a machine of that era up until the start of the century when it disappeared into the shadow realm. That was until 2018 when Suzuki decided to revive it once again. The Katana was back, but we had to wait for four long years before seeing it in flesh and bone. You see, the Katana's design still reminds you of the 80s. When everything else today is sharp, lean and modern, this is boxy and squared off to keep the retro vibe alive. It's almost Robocopish, a thing of the past, yet so attractive and distinct in the present. It's like wearing the aviator sunglasses from Ray-Ban, a throwback that still blends well with today. This is where there is meaning to the word Katana. Lethal, swift and terrifying. It's scary how effortlessly it pulls away. In spite of being an inline 4 where traditional engines make you clench your cheeks at the top end of the rev spectrum, the Katana gives you that feeling all throughout. Even in the lowest setting, the Katana feels so manic, it makes one question. How can you possibly enjoy all of this every day? How can you come to terms with how this feels? It's unreal how the K5 engine, which is almost two decades old, is still the weapon of choice in 2022. There are changes that have happened to the internals, but it's still very much a K5. The electronics are also updated. Bi-directional quick shift, five levels of traction control and slipper clutch as standard. The Katana feels just about okay to ride. Striving to find a good balance will take some tweaking of the suspension, but it's not all bad. Should feel really good when you're touring on the highway, but encounter a bad patch of road and it will require you to go down the gearbox. Full adjustability? Mm -mm. Comes at a cost and the Katana ain't about that at the moment. Two hundred and fifteen kilos. It almost makes you question why is it called the katana? And you will feel it when you're making the bike crawl or taking a U-turn. Pick up the pace and it immediately starts to feel better. Pushing it through corners requires some effort and you gotta take it easy when there's a quick change of turn. This feels the best when the tarmac is flowing and the input isn't that often. This feels the best when the throttle is open and the scenery is flying by fast. I wish the Katana was as light as the sword itself. I wish it didn't have a turning radius that long. I wish Suzuki gave the brakes a much stronger bite and I wish the tyres made you feel confident. And then there's the option of lever adjustability for the brake but not for the clutch. To close this, the Katana gets a 12-litre fuel tank. That's small for a litre-class motorcycle and fuel stops begin to pile up quick. It's the price tag that makes me forget all of what I complained about. Rupees 13.6 lakhs for the Katana. And if I have to zero it down, I will buy it just for that engine. It's intimidating, yet it makes me feel alive. 
It's a menace, but I'm fond of it. The acoustics have made me fall in love with an inline four engine once again, and the looks make me gravitate towards the motorcycle every time I see it. But there are things that need to be worked upon, and I wish that happened soon. For now, the Katana improved for 2022 and year to stay. Thank you.